Locate all of the installation hardware that came with your QBot. Find the x-axis drive assembly bracket that looks like this. You will need it for the next step. Next, move the sewing machine from the upper carriage and set it on the table surface of the frame. Lift the upper carriage and also set it on the table surface. Finally, turn over the lower carriage so that it looks like this. Remove the two bolts that hold the rear wheels on the lower carriage and install the x-axis drive assembly bracket as shown here. There is no up or down nor right or left to this bracket, so you cannot make a mistake at this step. Slide the bolts through the holes and reattach the wheels and the optical encoder in the same sequence as when they were removed. Fully tighten the nuts and ensure that the wheels spin and the optical encoder pivots freely. Next, install one of the drive assemblies to the bracket as shown here. You will use two quarter 20 by two inch long screws, two inch and an eighth aluminum spacers, and two quarter inch nuts to complete the assembly. Tighten securely. Now place the upper carriage back on the lower carriage as shown here. There are two pre-drilled holes in the aluminum wheel bracket where the other QBOT drive assembly will be installed. The drive assembly is attached with two quarter 20 screws, two inch and an eighth spacers, and two nuts, just as the previous assembly was installed on the lower carriage. Tighten the nuts securely. Next, some pilot holes must be drilled in the upper carriage. Cut out the templates from the template sheet that came with your QBOT. Cut along the solid lines. If you have misplaced the template sheet, the templates are also on this installation CD in PDF format. If you need to reprint the template, be sure that you have selected 100% scale in your print dialog to ensure the dimensions will be correct. Using some tape, attach the two templates to the front and rear of the lower carriage as shown. In this view, we are standing at the back of the sewing machine and frame. Using a 1 8 inch drill bit, drill a pilot hole in the front and rear of the lower carriage as shown here. Drilling to a depth of 1 half inch should be sufficient. When finished, the carriage should look something like this. Next, using a 3 quarter inch long panhead wood screw, install the drive wire holders to the front and rear of the lower carriage as shown. Tighten securely, but do not over tighten. Now, attach one end of the Y-axis drive wire to the front wire holder and wrap the drive wire around the drive wheel two times so the wire enters and exits the drive wheel from the top of the drive wheel, as shown. Secure the other end of the drive wire to the hook side of the turnbuckle, as shown, and place the eyelet side of the turnbuckle on the rear wire holder. Tension the drive wire by turning only the barrel of the turnbuckle, making sure that the hook end of the turnbuckle does not turn. When properly tensioned, the drive wire will emit a high-pitched tone when plucked like a guitar string. Next, cut out the drilling templates for the x-axis drive wire holders and place them on the ends of the frame. Align one edge of the template with the rear edge of the frame and one edge of the template to the top surface of the frame. The frame has rounded edges, so you will have to sight down the frame to make sure that you are as close as possible when aligning the template. Once you are satisfied with the location, use a piece of tape to hold the template. Now drill a 1 8 inch diameter pilot hole. Drill through the piece of wood slowly. Attach a wire holder to each end of the frame as shown here. Tighten securely, but do not over tighten. Attach one end of the x-axis drive wire to one of the wire holders. Then wrap the wire two times around the drive wheel so that the wire enters and exits the drive wheel from the bottom of the drive wheel. Secure the other end of the drive wire to the hook side of the turnbuckle as shown and place the eyelet side of the turnbuckle on the rear wire holder. Tension the drive wire by turning only the barrel of the turnbuckle making sure that the hook end of the turnbuckle does not turn. Next, cut out the last template and attach to the rear of the upper carriage as shown using a few pieces of tape. Drill two pilot holes using a 1 8 inch drill bit. Attach the QBOT head using two 3 quarter inch long wood screws as shown. Now that the QBOT head is attached, we can start making the electrical connections. First, plug in the X and Y cables into the top of the QBOT as shown. The X cable is black and the Y cable is silver. Make sure you hear a click sound when pushing the connector into the port. Next, connect the power supply cable to the power port on the QBOT. Attach the strain relief guides provided to the back of the QBOT and slide the cables through them as shown. This keeps the wiring tidy. 
Next, attach one end of the QCC connector cord to the port marked QCC remote port. Attach the other end to the remote port on the quilter's cruise control. You may have a splitter attached to this port. If so, unplug the cable that goes to the rear remote switch and use that port for the QBOT connector cord. Now consult the videos on the DVD that came with your QBOT to learn how to set up communication between your Android tablet and the QBOT head. You can also subscribe to the QBOT V3 YouTube channel to remain up to date with any updates made to the app or new instructional videos.